Hello everyone. In this topic, we will understand about Azure Files. Azure Files is one of the storage services under Azure Cloud Storage. Azure Files offers fully managed file shares, which will support SMB as well as NFS protocols. Azure File Shares can be mounted concurrently by cloud or on-prem deployments. We can use the clients, which is nothing but the servers which are hosted on cloud and on-prem deployments. The clients can be in on-prem or it can be in the cloud. SMB Azure File Shares are accessible from Windows, Linux and Mac OS. NFS Azure File Shares are accessible from Linux or Mac OS. SMB File Shares can be cached on Windows servers using Azure File Sync. This Azure File Sync is a separate service under Azure Cloud. You can use this Azure File Sync to sync the data which are from different file servers. If you have noticed in the on prem environment, you will have file servers created. It can be on Windows, it can be on Linux. For Windows, we use SMB and for Linux, we use NFS protocol. Let me take example of Windows itself. I have the file server fs01. This is a standalone server where I am going to create the share. So I will create the share. I need to define the share name. Once I define the share name, I need to add users and group so that this particular share can be accessed only by this users or groups these users or users who are part of the group can connect to the file share if i have given the share name as share and my share is finance if the users and group are part of finance department they will be given the access using the active directory users and groups so you have the share created for the finance users and groups so the users and groups who are part of the finance department they will authenticate to the shared folder and then they will be able to access the shared folder they can also map the shared folder as s drive since this is a shared folder. I am using S as the letter. They can give any name for the map. And this will actually point to the shared folder. In this way, they will connect to the shared folder. They will be able to access the shared folder. If I wanted to add some kind of redundancy to the file server, what I will do is I will add one more file server. I will call this as file server 02. And I will make this as the cluster. So the disks which are coming to the file server 01 and 02, it will be from the shared storage. So this file server 01 also have access to the shared storage, and file server 02 also have access to the shared storage. And whatever shares you are going to create using any one of the server, the users or client can be able to mount or map these shares on their client machines. If you are running a Linux operating system, then for example, this Linux server is named as Linux FS01 for Linux file server. I have created the NFS share by name NFS share. And I have mounted this NFS share under the data NFS share. I need to export this mount point in the export file. And also I need to mention from which IP address these shares can be accessible. And who can access, which users can access. By default, if I give the permission for the root, the clients which are connecting to the NFS shares, let me say these are the clients. This is also Linux clients which wanted to access the NFS shares. 
this will connect to the NFS share. If you have mentioned only root can access this NFS share, all the client machine has to connect to the exported NFS share, then use the root account to mount the export onto the client machines. So we need to mount the NFS share which is created on the Linux. If all these clients want to access the NFS share, then it has to mount. So it can mount under a mount point NFS share to access the data using this particular IP address using the root account. So this way we can connect to the Linux file server in the on prem environment. Similarly, we can use the Mac operating system as the client. If I have Mac OS as the client, I can use the same method to access the NFS share using the Linux file server. If I wanted to create a file share on the Azure, all I need is first thing storage account. I need to create the storage account because we know that storage account offers multiple storage services. It can be blob, it can be file, it can be disk, table and cube. So these are the storage services which are offered under every storage account. So you need to create the storage account, then you need to select the file. So you select the file share, enter the name for the file share, then define the quota. You define the quota for the file share. By default, the quota will be 5 dB. So once you create a file share, Every share will have the 5 TB limit. You can decrease this limit by editing the quota. And for that share, the limit will be whatever the size which you have chosen. If you wanted to select 100 GB as the quota size, you will get the 100 GB as the capacity for your file share. So if I say I have created a file share by named is it file share by default i have 5 tb of limit for this share i can limit by changing the quota to 100 gb so instead of 5 tb i will assign only 100 gb for this share i can go on creating the file shares under the same storage account and for the storage account itself we have limit of 5 petabytes so for file share we have 5 TB of limit and for storage account itself we have 5 petabytes of limit. This is the maximum limit for the storage account. We can ask Microsoft to increase the storage account limitation but we need to contact Microsoft to increase the limit. What are the benefits of using Azure files? We can have shared access to the shared folder. So we can have multiple users. So these users can connect to the shared folder which they have created using the Azure files. They can do read write simultaneously onto the shared folder. Fully managed service. Azure file storage is a fully managed service. There is no need for the end user or the customer to worry about the hardware or maintenance and there is no need to manage the Azure storage. Azure will take care of the hardware and maintenance part. Scripting and tooling. We can also use the PowerShell and CLI to do the scripting to create, mount, and manage the Azure file shares. And we know that Azure Storage has multiple redundancy options, and the Azure file is built from the ground up and it is designed in such a way that it will be always available. And the last point which I forgot is how do you access when you create a file share? So you have created the file share, but how do you access on the client machine? When you create the file share, Azure will automatically provide the option for you to integrate with the Active Directory. 
there is something called as storage keys. So you use the storage keys to access the file share. There is a script you can download from the portal itself. Using the script, you will be able to connect to the file shares what you have created. 